Hi, I'm Konstantin Baum, Master of Wine, and for the last thousands of years, people have found weird ways to store their wine. A trend that has recently emerged is storing wine underwater, in the ocean, or in lakes. I'm intrigued by this, and I want to find out whether this is actually good for the wine. So I'm going to do a blind tasting where I pitch a wine that was stored underwater against the same wine that was stored above ground to find out which one is better. Are you ready for this? Let's go. Storage conditions have an impact on the quality of the wine. That's a fact. If you keep wine at a high temperature, it will expand and push out the cork eventually. If you put a wine into a freezer, it will, well, freeze and also push out the cork and the wine will spoil. Where it gets difficult is when you talk about the ideal storage conditions, the ideal temperature, relative humidity and darkness level that really brings out the best out of your wine. There's very little scientific research available on this topic and most people just throw out general guidance without really being able to explain why 75% relative humidity is better than 57%, for example. Over the last years, more and more producers have started to store their wines in really weird locations in order to sell them off at a higher price. This all started with producers dumping their wines into all seven seas and it kind of reached its peak with one organization sending 12 bottles of Petrus into space for a year in order to sell one bottle off for a fortune. What may have contributed to this trend is that bottles that were found in shipwrecks were auctioned off at really crazy prices, so some producers might have spotted an opportunity here. I have to add here that most of them say that they are doing what they are doing because they believe it improves quality, and both for some of the shipwreck bottles and the bottle of Petrus, experienced tasters actually tasted those wines and judged them to be very good. But I'm skeptical about the benefits of aging wine for a fairly short period underwater under slightly different storage conditions. It is dark under the sea, so there's no negative impact of sunlight. There's also a very high level of humidity under the sea, obviously. But as long as the cork seals well, there's no water coming into the bottle. Another advantage is that there's no oxygen under the sea, so there's no risk of oxidation. But the most important factor for storage, however, is the temperature. And at the bottom of a deep lake or the ocean, it should be pretty consistent and pretty cold. Water is a bit freaky as it has its greatest density not when it's solid, ice, but when it's at 4 degrees Celsius. So the bottom of a deep lake or the ocean should be around that temperature all year around. So all of that sounds really good, but I don't really know whether storing wine in those conditions for half a year or a year really has an impact on the quality of the wine, but we are going to find that out right now. Let me pause this video for a second and say if you like this video so far and if you want to learn more about wine, then please do subscribe. It really helps me out. Thanks. So the first two wines are both 2019 Albarinos from the Atis Winery in Rias Baixas in Spain. They look different and that is because this one is the flagship wine of the estate and it's made in more or less a conventional way. It's called Lias Finas. But this one here is the Atis Mar, and that one was aged for six months in the Atlantic Ocean at a depth of 12 meters. The Atis Winery is claiming that aging the same wine under the sea has the following impact. The cold waters of the sea sway it for six months making its alter ego emerge. They're also saying that this increases the aging potential of this wine. But I also gotta add that this wine costs 75 euros, while this one costs 15 euros. So there's quite a big difference here. I gotta say this bottle looks quite interesting. It's slightly dirty and stained with leftovers coming from under the sea, I guess. So it looks interesting. And there's a glass stopper here which might already change the taste of the wine anyways. But yeah, we'll see. This bottle doesn't look as interesting, but well, is this little bit of dirt really worth 60 euros? I'll find out. The two wines look pretty much the same. They're slightly golden, quite an intense color. And now I'm going to find out whether I can taste or smell a difference using my randomizer. Let's go. So let's taste it. This is interesting. First of all, they are not hugely different. I don't think that this price gap is at all justified. I'm not 100% sure which one is which, but I don't think any of them really is worth 75 euros. 
But anyways, so the wines do taste different. And if the wine is actually exactly the same, then that's quite interesting to think about. Because this one is quite open. It's fairly juicy, fruity. It seems to be yeah, kind of ready to drink now. While this glass is a bit more reductive. The wine is less open. There's less aromatic intensity here. And on the palate, it even feels a little bit more grippy, a little bit more linear, a bit more acidic. I think quality-wise, they are more or less on the same level. I would rate this 89 points, while this is more of an 88-point wine for me. But yeah, that's very close. I enjoy this wine a lot more than I enjoy this wine. Maybe this wine needs a little bit more time to really open up. And I'm curious to find out which one is which. I would guess that this one is the standard, the Lias Finas, while this one is the Atisman, just by what they said about the quality, the age worthiness of the Atisma after being stored underwater. But let's find out. Okay, so I said this one is the Lias Finas, and there should be an L there for land, and it is the land aged wine, the Lias Finas. So this has to be the sea aged wine, the Atisma. Interesting. So for the first two wines, you can debate whether the aging under the sea actually has changed the wine. I think there's a noticeable difference, but it didn't improve the wine. And I think the price gap is far too wide. I would never pay 75 euros for this if I could get this for 15 euros. The next two wines definitely win the prize for the fanciest packaging ever on this channel. It's the Crusoe Treasure Sea Passion number no. 6. And it's again the same wine. One is aged under the sea while the other one isn't. The winery started as a research project in 2008 in Bilbao in the northeast of Spain. They wanted to find out what the impact of storing wine underwater would be on its quality. And apparently 90% of the participants in the study preferred the wine that was stored underwater to the wine that wasn't stored underwater. Let's find out whether I'm one of those 90%. So these two wines should both be the same base wine, Tempranillo and Maturana, aged in barriques for six months. And then this bottle was aged for 15 months under the sea, while this one wasn't. Again, those two wines in the gift box aren't cheap. I paid 125 euros for them too. And that sounds like quite a lot considering that the winery is not really well known and that it's from Spain. Considering that this winery started as a research project, there's not a lot of scientific information on the storage of wine underwater, just quite a lot of marketing speak in this brochure. In these wines, they share their knowledge about the terroir and winery processes to elaborate excellent wines that the sea rounds up, creating wonders for the palate. Let's see. Of course, they have wax capsules. Ooh, and really cheap corks. Well, this is a DM at least. I'm going to mix it up a little bit. This time the wine from the sea is on that side and it's again in the glass marked with the S while the wine that was aged on land is in the glass with the L. And let's go. All right, let's taste. I didn't check for the color before, but I would say they look pretty similar. There's not a big difference in terms of color, in my opinion. Okay, here we have a set of wines that are really, really similar. They smell and taste kind of the same. There's just a tiny, tiny bit of difference. This wine tastes a little bit more open, a little bit more fruit driven. There are notes of blackberries, cassis, a little bit of cherry as well. And there's also this olive tapenade flavor coming through. In the beginning, this was a little bit more close, but now it's opening up and there's very little difference. It's really hard to tell the difference between the two wines. Going with the same logic as before, I would say that this wine, the more reduced wine, was the one that was aged under the sea and this one wasn't. I think they're both 87 point wines. They're pretty similar. They're pretty good wines, but none of them should cost 60 euros, especially for wine coming out of Spain. That's a bit of a crazy price. But now let's find out whether I was actually right. This wine was the wine that was aged under the sea level, or this wine was the one that was aged on land. Yay. 
At the end of my little experiment, I gotta say there is a difference between wine that was aged in the sea and wine that wasn't, but it's usually very, very small and it's not worth the cost of buying the more expensive sea aged wine just to get a little bit more reductiveness. I think that's really what it comes down to. The wines from the sea were more reductive. They didn't have as much openness. They weren't as fruit driven. They were a little bit more restrained. Therefore, maybe a little bit more age worthy, but not necessarily the better wines. So that means I just spent way too much money on wines that weren't worth it. But hey ho, you live, you learn, and maybe I helped you with this. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please like it down here. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. My question of the day is, have you ever tasted wines that were aged under the sea? Let me know down below. I'm not going to flood the cellar, that's for sure. And I hope I see you guys again soon. Until then, stay thirsty.